This autism teaching module is on visual schedules. My name is Mike Woods. I'm an autism and inclusion specialist for St. Louis's largest school district. I'm also a board certified associate behavior analyst. If you need more information, presentations, podcasts on other topics, go to my website www.makingroom.net. I want you to imagine being on a four-day whirlwind tour of all of the major attractions in Orlando, Florida, SeaWorld, Universal Studios, the Wizard World of Harry Potter, Magic Kingdom, Epcot, and so on. And you discover that you've forgotten your itinerary. So every day you have no clue where you're going to go, what you're going to see, when you're going to eat. That would create a little bit of anxiety and stress for most folks that I know and that you know, wouldn't it? Well, that's how many of our learners, our children, feel about life on a daily basis. So today, we're going to talk about visual schedules and how they can help to reduce the anxiety and stress associated with not knowing. So why use a visual schedule? Well, a visual schedule is an evidence-based strategy or tool to use with children and adults on the autism spectrum. It's also a visual support strategy or visual communication strategy, which is also beneficial. Schedules allow students to feel comfortable and competent as they move through their day. The use of schedules makes the home, classrooms at school, Sunday school classrooms run more smoothly, and children function more independently. Using schedules also builds on the strengths that many children have, including visual perceptual skills and functioning within routines. So visual schedules build on a common strength for a child with autism, which is their visual perceptual skills. A visual schedule can improve a child's understanding by providing information in a very structured and sequential way. Visual schedules help children to function more independently once they know how to use them. They also help children to gain confidence, which in turn builds their self-esteem. And just as importantly, it allows a child to be successful. So the visual schedule provides information. It provides information about what events are going to occur, whether you're using the visual schedule for a one hour time frame or for all day long. It lets somebody know what events are going to occur, the order that the events will occur, any new activities that may occur, and this is important when you sometimes have to introduce new things into typical routines, sometimes that can create a lot of stress and anxiety for some of our learners. The visual schedule is the perfect place to build a picture into that schedule to show them that something new is going to occur today. Or any changes that might occur during regular activities or events or routines. The visual schedules can display that. It's a good place to let somebody know that later on today something different is going to happen. Not new, but a change in this particular case. And then also the visual schedule can help provide information about when it's time to transition from one event to another. So the use of a schedule often enables the teacher, Sunday school teacher, regular education teacher, to spend more time in teaching and interacting in a positive manner instead of constantly redirecting and intervening as students are unable to move independently through their day. And the skills that your learner develops as they learn to follow directions and complete tasks using a visual schedule will be invaluable to them as they move into post-secondary vocational or academic settings or perhaps later if they need to be in a residential setting. Visual schedules increase pre predictability. They help to establish the concept of being finished and that concept is taught by the way that you use the visual schedule. We'll talk about that a little bit later. The visual schedule can increase predictability by helping a learner to know what the expectations are going to be. It increases predictability by letting someone know the events or activities and the sequence that they're going to happen in, anything new and any changes as we talked about, which decreases the element of surprise, which is, can often cause stress or anxiety in some of our learners on the autism spectrum. And the schedule also more easily helps to teach and establish routines. And once those routines are learned, then predictability increases. And also it provides a visual means to anticipate 
transitions and this is pretty important because sometimes those can be a moment of problem behaviors and so if they're more predictable problem behaviors can decrease due to that so the consistency provided by the schedule builds an atmosphere of predictability and security and the permanence of a visual schedule as opposed to the transience of speech allows your learner to refer to the schedule as often as needed in order to understand what's going on Again, a visual schedule can help children to understand a routine, and it may also provide the motivation to work through a less desirable activity or event in order because they know that a more preferred one is coming next, thus helping them maintain appropriate behavior. Again, talking about how to construct a visual schedule, there's a couple of steps that you want to follow here. You know, whether you're putting together a visual schedule that will be used for a couple of hours at church or a half a day at home or a full day at school, you need to identify all of the events or the activities that will occur during the specific time frame that you're going to use the visual schedule. So how much information can your learner handle at one time? Well, if there are 10 events or activities that will occur should you put them all on the schedule at once or do you need to break it down into smaller increments perhaps displaying three to five events at a time that's going to be very individualized to your learner some children are capable they have a strong scanning repertoire a visual scanning repertoire in which case they can scan eight or nine or ten pictures some kids will lose interest and so they're able to scan perhaps just two or three pictures so that's going to dictate some of this and then the other thing is is just the chunks of information that they can retain for some kids it may mean need to be smaller chunks for some kids larger and that's going to determine how many pictures you'll use on your visual schedule at any one time and then, then the last thing is, is you want to determine the developmental visual stage that your learners at and remember I talked about this in a previous module the developmental visual stages are this the object stage photo stage, the picture symbolic stage, or the text stage. If your learner's at the text stage, you can use words. But if they're at the object stage where you have to use objects because they don't understand pictures yet, then text would not make any sense to use, nor would it be very productive. So you need to determine the developmental visual stage that your learner is at and represent the information in that particular format. Continuing to talk about how to construct a visual schedule, Next, you want to take a digital camera and take a picture of every event or activity that you've identified. After that, you want to print those pictures out. Find yourself a lam laminating machine. A lot of times at Home Office Depot or Office Max, if you work in a school district, they typically have laminating machines there. A lot of times your church will have a laminating machine. You could take it to one of these locations to get your pictures laminated or use like that clear contact paper. Um, that's kind of challenging. I've tried to do that before. I prefer a laminating machine. But you want to laminate the pictures that you're going to use because by laminating the pictures you make them much more durable. They can be taken off and put on. They might follow the floor. You can pick them up. They don't tear or crumble very easy. So laminating the pictures, very important step. Then you want to place a piece of Velcro on the back of each picture. Now that's important because you're going to take a cardstock piece of paper, and this can vary in size. You could have a small visual schedule with fewer pictures or a larger visual schedule with many pictures. That will determine how big or small this piece of paper needs to be. But you're also going to laminate that cardstock. Now cardstock paper tends to be thicker than regular. Uh, printer type or typing type paper. So I recommend a cardstock type thickness of paper. Make sure that you laminate that also. How to construct a visual schedule? You want to arrange the pictures in sequential order on the cardstock piece of paper. The pictures that you've used to represent the activities or events that are going to occur. Place them in their sequential order from left to right, preferably, on the piece of cardstock paper. And then what you're going to do is, is you're going to attach a piece of Velcro to the cardstock paper immediately below those pictures so that, that you've placed in sequential order. So you're going to have a piece of Velcro on the back of your picture. You're going to arrange your pictures on that card, laminated cardstock paper. 
with equal spacing in between them, whether it's three pictures or ten pictures, whatever the case may be. And then right below where you have that picture, that is where you're going to attach another piece of Velcro because that's the way that you're going to be able to put the pictures on that cardstock or pull them off to rearrange the order or to use for a different day. As your learner uses a schedule throughout the day, he should be manipulating it in some way to show that it is changing as activities are completed. He or she can remove the symbols or turn them over or cross them off in a way to indicate that activities are finished. So in this example here, you see that this is a three-picture visual schedule. First, the learner is going to play with Play-Doh. Then after that, they're going to go to Snack. And after that, he's going to get a choice. Well. After I've determined that Play-Doh or playing with Play-Doh, that particular time frame is over with, I'm going to show the visual schedule to the learner and have them remove that picture from the visual schedule and give it to me or set it down or put it in an envelope. But it's going to come off of that visual schedule, which would show that that activity is over. And then when you look at what the next picture would be on there, it's snack time. So that's the perfect time to say it's time for snack. And you have a picture to represent that activity. And after snack, you get to make a choice about something that you want to do. So it shows what even happens after that. After snack time was over, you would remove, you would show the visual schedule to the learner, have them remove that snack picture, and say snack time is over. Now you get to make a choice. So as you remove pictures from this, it tells the learner what's over, what's coming next, and with the amount of pictures that are left, it also helps them to learn how much more time is left for using this visual schedule. Here's an example of one that we use with an elementary school student. Again, um, at certain times of the day, your learner may have an opportunity to make a choice between activities, and that can be depicted by placing those choices side by side on the schedule so that your learner comes to know that this is a time for choice. And you see in Josh's example here, working from the top to the bottom, at some point in that day, there's a choice between playing basketball or playing on the computer. Now, for everything else, is a mandatory event or activity or routine that he's going to participate in. But at that particular point in time, he gets to make a choice. And notice the envelope at the bottom of Josh's schedule. That's where we're going to put those pictures. As he pulls the top picture off to indicate that reading time is over, we're going to say reading time is over. Take that picture off, put it in the envelope, and say, oh, looks like science is next. Let's go to science. And again, as each activity or event is over, we'll take the picture off, put it away, so that the learner knows what's going to come next and what's left for the remainder of the day. And how much of the day is left is determined, is more easily determined by the number of pictures that's left on the board. Here's an example of an object visual schedule. Again, you can see that this one goes from left to right. And in this case, we're using objects to represent the activities or events that will occur. And we will remove these objects one by one as each activity or event is done to help the learner know what was completed and what comes next, and also how many remaining things are there to do within this course of time that we're using this visual schedule. And then lastly, here's just two examples. This is a visual schedule that you can use, and you can put it in a notebook format for someone who might be in high school, or you need multiple pages of these to represent different uh, sequences of activities. And then on the right-hand side here, this is another one that uses pictures and text. Again, this would be for an older learner. And as each one is complete, instead of removing the pictures, you're just drawing a line through what was completed, letting the learner know what comes next and what's still left for the day. And that concludes this module on a visual schedule. I appreciate your time. I hope you find this of use. God bless, and have a good day.